come on the air. The shift in this race in just one week. The new numbers, Clinton and Trump. Breaking news tonight right here in New York City. Two police officers shot, answering the call of a home invasion. One dead tonight. Images coming in from the scene right now. Also tonight, another horrific discovery. First, the woman kidnapped, missing for months, chained in a storage shed. Tonight, what authorities have now found. The explosive new video just released an African-American man and the takedown, the police canine. <laughs> authorities now say they had the wrong man. And the ABC News investigation on home appliances, some exploding, blowing apart. And now tonight, the major recall. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we begin tonight with several breaking stories on a Friday. First, the race for president, the new ABC News tracking poll just out tonight. Hillary Clinton, the full court press with Bernie Sanders overnight. Pharrell there on the right. Her effort to reach young voters, minorities, who could very well decide this race. And another big name for her tonight. Donald Trump in Ohio today as well. His children out across the country as he now barnstorms the battlegrounds. And here they are, the new numbers tonight. Hillary Clinton at 47. Donald Trump, 43, a very tight race. ABC Cecilia Vega leading us off. Hillary Clinton today invited the man she calls a real billionaire to blue collar Pittsburgh to take on Donald Trump. And that is exactly what Mark Cuban did. Do we want somebody who ripped off hardworking Americans? No. And asking the crowd to help convince undecided voters, even those who may not like her. Please ask them to search their heart about what kind of country we want for our kids and our grandkids. It is not, it is not as important that they think about voting for me as it is that they think about voting for themselves. And overnight, Clinton acknowledging this election is making America sick. I know there are a lot of people who are upset about what's gone on in this campaign, aren't there? People come and talk to me. I've had people say that they can't sleep, that their stomachs are bothering them, they have headaches. And I think that's an important signal because this is a big decision. Her army of top surrogates fanning out across the map. Bernie Sanders in Iowa, Vice President Joe Biden in Wisconsin, and President Obama in North Carolina, mincing no words about Donald Trump's own words. Who calls women pigs and dogs and slobs. The problem is, is that he's done it so much that, that it's become almost normal. It's like uh, suddenly reality TV has entered into the race for the presidency. Woo, not right. It's not even Survivor or The Bachelorette. I mean, it's like some love and hip hop stuff. The president telling voters, she is my friend. I trust her. Bill Clinton joining in the fray in Colorado, going after Melania Trump's speech against online bullying. We must treat each other with respect and kindness. I never felt so bad for anybody in my life as I did for his wife going out, giving a speech saying, oh, cyberbullying was a terrible thing. <laughs> I thought, yeah, especially if it's done at 3 o'clock in the morning against the former Miss Universe by a guy running for president. In this final weekend, Clinton's well-oiled political machine out in force. Nearly one million volunteers making calls and knocking on doors. And to encourage young voters, she's calling on her famous friends, from Pharrell to tonight's big concert in Cleveland with Jay-Z. Thousands lined up for a coveted ticket, distributed, not at all by chance, right next to a polling site. One stop shopping for people like Marcellus, who picked up his ticket and then went to vote. And Cecilia Vega with us live tonight from Cleveland, Jay-Z, and a concert for Clinton there tonight. And they're saying some surprise guests. They're trying to pull out the stops with one weekend left. 
David, I hate to break it to you. The campaign says LeBron James, Cleveland Zone, will not be here. The big question, is this special guest, the surprise guest, Beyonce? But look, Hillary Clinton has one goal in this final weekend. She needs to reach as many people as she possibly can to get them to the polls. She is convinced the way to do that is with the star power in here tonight, David. Cecilia Vega leading us off on a Friday night. Cecilia, thank you. This is all about the battlegrounds now, which is why Clinton will be in Ohio tonight. Donald Trump already there today. His numbers showing strength there. He absolutely needs Ohio and several other swing states to break through any Clinton firewall. Trump visiting 10 states in three days now. And ABC's Tom Yamas is with the Trump campaign. Tonight, Donald Trump landing in Battleground, Ohio, putting this question to the crowd of cheering fans. Who has voted? Whoa, not great. But you're saving it for November 8th, I think, right? It's all right. You want to be traditional, right? Trump on a sprint to the finish, planning to hit 10 states in three days. His children out there as well, speaking to smaller audiences. And overnight in North Carolina, Trump drawing a crowd of more than 17,000, surrounding himself with decorated veterans and attacking Hillary Clinton. You know, when I look at these great admirals and these great generals and these great Medal of Honor recipients behind me, to think of her being their boss? I don't think so. And you know, they're incredible patriots. They would never say a thing, but I know what they're thinking. It's not, it's not for them, believe me. But as the clock winds down, Trump spreading a bogus story that first appeared on Fox News, a false report that the FBI was investigating the Clinton Foundation and would likely indict Hillary Clinton. They believe they'll continue to uh, likely a, an indictment. Trump ripping the headline and running with it. There is more breaking news that I'd like to share with you right now. The FBI agents say their investigation is likely to yield an indictment. But the story was soon discredited. Still, Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, unfazed when asked if he would correct the record. Well, the damage is done to Hillary Clinton, though, no matter how it's being termed. Today, Fox News anchor Brett Baer apologized for reporting an indictment was likely, saying it was a mistake, and for that, I'm sorry. But Trump still pushing the discredited story. Hillary is now facing major problems with perjury. The FBI agents say their investigation is likely to yield, perhaps, an indictment. Today at a Trump rally in New Hampshire, another sign of just how ugly the race has gotten. This crass joke from former New Hampshire Governor John Sununu. Do you think Bill was referring to Hillary when he said, I did not have sex with that woman? <laughs> and Tom Yamas with us live tonight in Pennsylvania. And Tom, we saw the big concert for Clinton tonight. Trump's aware the president has been out there for Hillary Clinton. He's criticized that. He's counting on his surrogates, though, in these final days. That's right, David. Sarah Palin was there for Donald Trump in the primaries. She was there at one of the debates, and she will now be there in the final days. We've just learned she's going to be campaigning in Michigan and North Carolina. The race so tight in North Carolina, Trump needs to win that state. And Michigan, if he were to win there, that would be a huge upset. David? All right, Tom Yamas tonight. Tom, thanks. And Tom... Only you know this more than anyone. Four days left to go. Our election night coverage begins right here with World News Tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll be joining George and the entire powerhouse political team. And of course, we will be here all night long, as long as it takes. In the meantime, we do move on to other news this Friday night. And there is late word this evening of a deadly police shootout right here in New York City. A police sergeant killed, another officer wounded. Authorities say, gun say gunfire erupting as the officers were responding to a call for help. ABC's David Wright with the images coming in now. Police say the suspect was attempting to rob a woman he knew and fled the scene. Police officers in pursuit. Cops were going by, the shots were gone. I didn't even think there were shots. I actually thought they were fireworks. The suspect crashed his getaway car on a nearby street and shot one of the two sergeants at point blank range. Sergeant Paul Tuzolo, a 19 year veteran of the force, later died of his wounds. The loss, very good man. A devoted man, a man who committed his life to protecting all of us. The other officer wounded, Sergeant Emmanuel Quo, his partner, was shot in the leg. 
but he's expected to make a full recovery. David? David Wright tonight, thank you. Now to South Carolina and to new horror revealed in the case of the rescued woman held captive for months, chained inside a storage container. Police returning to the scene today, discovering human remains on the property. The suspect, a realtor, in court today in ABC's Eva Pilgrim tonight on why authorities say this might not be the end of it. Tonight, a grisly find in the South Carolina woods, an unidentified body, and the search for more victims. Convicted sex offender Todd Kolhep appearing in court today. The charge that I have before you today is kidnapping. Charged in the kidnapping of Kayla Brown, held captive for two months, just rescued from a shipping container on his property. And she witnessed the defendant shoot. Charles David Carver. Brown telling police her boyfriend, Charles Carver, who disappeared with her in late August, was killed at the hands of the suspect. Police zeroed in on this rural area after tracing Brown's last cell phone pings to a nearby tower. They heard desperate banging from a shipping container during a search of Kolheb's property. Brown was found inside a second metal crate chained by the neck and the ankle. Tonight, the 30 year old who recently cleaned homes for the local real estate agent is now recovering in the hospital. The suspect's mother telling ABC News today, just shoot me. That's all I can say. I'm so, so sorry. I just can't believe this. David Kolhep has not yet entered a plea in this case, but the solicitor says he was convicted as a teenager of kidnapping and rape. Investigators will be here searching through the weekend. David. Eva Pilgrim, our thanks to you. And in St. Paul, Minnesota tonight, outrage over a police takedown involving officers, a police dog, and an unarmed man. Dash cam video showing the man being repeatedly kicked by an officer and then bitten by the dog. It turns out they had the wrong man. ABC's Clayton Sandell on the police chief now apologizing tonight. This dash cam video shows an innocent man being taken down and savagely attacked by a police dog. Then repeatedly kicked by other officers in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm disappointed and upset by what the video shows. I'm profoundly saddened. Internal affairs reports say last June, one officer was too quick to release his dog on 52-year-old Frank Baker, who was following officer commands and was unarmed. The dog attacks for over a minute, the kicks breaking his ribs. The injuries kept Baker in the hospital for two weeks. And that canine officer got a 30-day suspension. The other five officers are still being investigated. Tonight, Baker says he appreciates the chief's apology, but his attorney tells me they are still planning on suing the city. David. Clayton Sandell tonight. Clayton, thanks. Overseas tonight and growing questions about three American service members killed while on a training mission in Jordan. The Pentagon says they were shot in their vehicles while approaching the gate of a Jordanian military base. Investigators are looking at whether the incident may have been a misunderstanding. And dramatic images coming in from Iraq tonight in the fight against ISIS. Militant fighters setting more than a dozen oil wells on fire just south of Mosul. Thick clouds of toxic black smoke filling the sky, blocking out the sun. Thousands of families affected by the flames struggling to breathe. Iraqi troops backed by the U.S. are battling to free the city from ISIS control. Back here at home tonight and to New Jersey. The bombshell jury verdict tonight hitting close to home for one of Donald Trump's top surrogates, Two former allies of Governor Chris Christie convicted today in the so-called Bridgegate scandal. Bridge you may recall jamming traffic on call. the George Washington Governor. Bridge here in New York City connecting to New Jersey. It was all about a political rival. The verdict coming as Christie was scheduled to hit the campaign trail for Trump tomorrow. We've now learned he will not. Here's Ryan Smith. Tonight. Emotions running high as two officials formerly linked to New Jersey Governor Chris Christie are convicted in a plot to cause this massive traffic jam on the world's busiest bridge. Ex Christie aide Bridget Ann Kelly choking back tears as the possibility of prison hangs over her head. Now, Bridget, Bridget's not right now. We have to get home to family. A jury finding the mother of four and another Bridgegate architect, Bill Baroni, guilty on nine criminal counts, including conspiracy and fraud for orchestrating those George Washington Bridge lane closures. Ambulances stuck. Are we medics were notified. Uh, for a injury should weigh in for over an hour. All in the name of political payback for a New Jersey mayor who didn't support Christie's 2013 re-election campaign. 
Christie was never charged, but in the trial, multiple witnesses disputed the governor's account and said he was told of the lane closures long before the time frame that he has acknowledged. Governor Christie in a statement today denying he had prior knowledge of the lane closures, saying, I will set the record straight in the coming days. And both defendants in this case say they will appeal. David? Ryan Smith tonight. Ryan, thank you. There is still much more ahead on World News tonight this Friday. The ABC News investigation that revealed washing machines blowing apart. New tonight here, the major recall being issued after those washing machines turned dangerous, blowing up with some family members standing right there. Also tonight, the star singer making a heartbreaking announcement. What Michael Buble has revealed about his family. And the biggest cruise ship in the world set to arrive at an American port and tonight. We take you right inside. I have asthma, one of many pieces in my life. So when my asthma symptoms kept coming back on my long-term control medicine, I talked to my doctor and found a missing piece in my asthma treatment with Brio. Once daily Brio prevents asthma symptoms. Brio's for adults with asthma not well controlled.